Oh, what do we have? Bug fixes. High APM players should no longer experience total client freezes in late games. <laughs> uh, unit active abilities should no longer have negative effect on frames per second. So both the both these issues. So if if you played a lot of Stormgate, you would have noticed that late game, some people just freeze out of the game. Like the game just ends for them. And apparently it was related to having high APM, like cycling between units and control groups too much. Uh, the second issue, this one down here, with the frame, frame rate, that's what happened to me, by the way. I was I was uh, posting on the Discord about this issue as well. Uh, m many others, though, not only me, but this is what happened to me, where uh, Vanguard units, those that have energy, which basically the, the medic... They are almost always part of the unit composition, right? So that's why it happened for Vanguard, but not for Infernal, because they I think they only have one unit that has energy. But either way, like the medics have been the the culprit of my frame my my 15 frames late game can't play the game anymore. Scam. Uh Bob's overcharge can no longer be cast on command posts under construction. So this is a pretty clear statement by them. It was not intentional. Uh, launch, launch sensor drone can no longer be launched from command post under construction. Same issue, I guess. Then uh, Shroudstone Manifestation. I think that's the tower that the Infernals can use with mana. Or with the Animus or whatever it's called. Uh, they basically cannot back up use it anymore. Like they have to... They cannot put it near enemy, enemy towers anymore. I don't know. There was some weird bug. Fix an issue where Nightfall Infestation could follow a targeted unit. That happened to me many times, you know? Sure, I'm a washed up player, but if I see a red circle, like that's all I do in MOBA. I see a circle, I walk out of the circle. But what happened in Stormgate is, you walk out of the circle, and then your whole army gets, <laughs> gets infested anyways. I was like, this is, what the fuck is going on? So it turns out it was just bugged. Uh, health camps now provide intended heal rate of 8 health per second. I don't know if it was higher or lower. Um, fixed an issue where lances and metex meta could intentionally fit through certain wall wall-offs. I guess they squeeze through. Um, that reminds me a little bit of Zerkling squeezing through the wall of Protoss back in the day. Disgusting and luckily it was fixed. Magmadon's trample ability can no longer affect air units. That happened to me as well, by the way. I had... Uh, I had some hornets, my opponent had zero anti-air, and then the, the Kodo started trampling, and then like three of my hornets died, and I had no idea that the, that it was bugged, right? But yeah, that's fixed now. Magmadons trample ability no longer affects structures, apparently Magmadons were trampling the whole map and everything, buildings included. Uh, Medtech system shock ability now correctly dispels infest, so the system shock is the tier 3 upgrade. Or the second upgrade for Medtex. Uh it's it's the one that gives speed boost and technically cleanses all negative effects, but I guess it was bugged as well. Didn't 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 cleanse. Uh Vul the Vulcan jump will no, no longer be blocked by an enemy corpse. I noticed that. It was very weird. Like you know the Kodos are trampling. And then you have the Vulcans that are supposed to like have a similar, like they can jump and stun a unit. But they were like really buggy. They would like fly forward and then they get stuck in in nothing, basically. Vulcans are the big mechs with the, with the minigun. So people didn't really upgrade that because it, like it, it felt like it didn't really work. Maybe now it works as intended. Uh, balance changes. Level 2 speed camps. I think level 2 speed camp means... The first speed camp that you find on the map. I think they are always level 2. Maybe. Uh, have been updated to spawn fewer goats. That is a nerf to Infernal. Because what they did. They take one gaunt. They go to the speed camp. They start hitting the goats. Eventually the goats die. And they all become Infernal units. Like Fiends. So putting less goats means less creeps. And less creeps means less snowball Bullshit by Infernal. Vanguard. Scout. That's the doggo. Claws upgrade cost increased from 25-25 to 50-50. 
Uh, and the same research code uh, from 30 to 60. So it's more expensive and it takes a lot longer. So I can tell you that I think these are good changes. I think the dog openings were annoying and somewhat oppressive and silly and annoying. Did I already say annoying? Yeah. So I think nerfing that is good. Um, the build orders we had... Like 20, 25 gas, like mining 25 gas was very quick. So having to gather 50 now will take longer. And then you need to wait 60 seconds before you have the upgrade. That's a pretty very significant nerf to the dog, dog opening. Uh, med tech supply from 2 to 3. I guess that's, yeah. I guess like the, the exo med tech composition. I mean, people are complaining. Uh, the infernal players, they were all complaining, can't beat it, but then... 85% of the players are infernal. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they were complaining about, but yeah. I guess it's fine. Like, probably was too strong. The med tech is very valuable. And if if the med tech wouldn't have dropped my frames to 5, and probably every other Vanguard's frame rate to 5, maybe we would have had competitive late game. But if one player has like 10 FPS and the other 120, like you cannot micro, so even late game was actually messed up because of it. Hedgehog, that's a little hellion, the little buggy. In my opinion, the unit was really shit. Uh, they changed the way the recharge of the ammo works, so I guess it's slightly faster. The way the unit works, it has like I think it has four bullets. It shoots four of them right away, and then it slowly recharges the the cannon. I, I don't know. It's I'm, I have to test this. I think the unit might still be shit. But uh, the, the, the headshot was very OP in the first uh, alpha. So people were spamming it and then they nerfed it. Uh, Vulcan range from 7 to 8. That is a very good quality of life change. The Vulcan is supposed to be good against like Fians and small units. Having one extra range. It's actually pretty, pretty significant, uh, pretty significant uh, buff. They didn't find the Kodo unit. No, no, no. The Kodos got nerfed. Here, they got bug fixed because they were giga buggy. They were trampling everything, bro. They were trampling air, structures, everything. But they... At least they don't do that anymore. So 7 to 8. So let this one here. Evac. It's really sky mine. So I never used that. I don't know exactly what it was before. But uh, now the cooldown is down to 20 seconds. You have to pay money to to release the mine, but they last forever, or deton like detonated or killed, right? So I think it's the it's the drop ship. It can fly around, and you press the button, and then it leaves a little mine right behind the drop ship. And I think the mine has a an aggro range, so if another air unit flies into that range, they will go after them. So. I, I haven't really seen it used or like what exactly it's supposed to do or how you want to utilize it. But they basically reworked it, right? Like almost no cooldown, but you have to pay money now. Um, Hornet. That's the air unit, the little, the shooting one of the Vanguard. Uh, I don't know if the Reclaimer Stingers, if, if this is gr ground attack or air attack. So... My feeling was the Hornet does too much damage to ground units. So I would say they should have nerfed the ground damage. And maybe that's exactly what it is. Uh, flag cannon. That's when you build a bunker and you put a marine in. Like an exo. So now the anti-air is uh, range up to 12. That sounds very good to me. Uh, it will help you against the drop. Because you can right click the drop ship easier. And it says uh, attacking air units will now only spl uh, splash into air units. Okay, that um, that makes sense, right? That's consistent. So th they should be really good against mutal discs as well. All right, infernal balance changes. What do we have? Hellspawn resurgence. I think that's the chrono boost ability. Like they they click it and then they get three charges of a unit. That's a significant nerf. Twenty five was before. Now it's forty energy. That's that's actually. A lot. A lot more than it used to be. So that's... 
probably stopping them from I mean yeah it, it's part of it was part of the snowball actually so it's a good nerf uh imp inflamed imp damage decreased from a hundred to a hundred but only plus 50 to structures so I haven't seen it because I I'm not good enough at the game but I heard that in very high MMR parting for example he builds like six flame imps and he blows up your nexus like he blows up your command post like the command center whatever it's called and uh, it looks like this nerf is, is exactly for him because they don't really change only against structures right so i feel like this is a parting nerf because people were saying he's like blowing everything up with the with the imps like fucking uh bane links like he was like using it up using it probably super hard all right brute the sunder soul ability now grants fiends max white hp 15. so 15 is the max shield for a fiend i guess i will just call it shield i don't know um i think cu currently or before this patch you can press the button and you get two fiends but there was no benefit of pressing the button because if the brute dies you get two fiends so you didn't need to press the button ever now if you press so now if the brute gets focused it has one percent you press the button boom you get a fiend you get two fiends that have full shield actually um all fiends start with zero white health down from 7.5 this includes fiends born from infest and the ones that drop from brute brutes on death so it's very good to press the button now to micro it because if you micro it now you get 15 shield instead of zero and it used to be 7.5 shield so you get yeah if if you press the button it's really good much much better movement speed increased from six to seven not quite sure why you would want to have faster f like that's disgusting to me in my in my opinion that is maybe not needed uh, Gaunt weapon bounce range decreased from 5 to 3.5. That sounds very significant to me. Um, the Gaunt is like the, the early game unit that infests everything, that starts the snowball, like it makes fiends out of everything, creep camps and so on. Yeah, having less bounce, like the bounce basically works like a huntress in Warcraft 3. Like you shoot something and then there's like a few glaives that hit other, uh, other buildings or units. So this should be very noticeable actually i would say doombringer that's the dropship of infernal the doom doombringer can now load units while in mobilized mode i believe you can load in your units without landing the dropship now which is probably a good quality of life change but it also drastically buffs drops that are already op <laughs> so I, th I I don't know about this. I, I don't know about this one. Uh, Magmadon. Consume cooldown increase from 0.25 to 5 seconds. So, the way consume worked for Infernals, like the big units like Magmadon and Reaver, uh, they were able to press consume and then they eat one of the Fiends and get full shield. And I don't think you had to micro it. I think you just press the button and it would automatically eat a fiend if it was nearby. So it was actually insanely OP, I think. Because if you had enough fiends spawning, you would just eat, keep eating them. And then your frontline would never die. So now it has a 5 second cooldown, which sounds fair to me. Before that, it sounded absurd. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they had to, micro maybe they had to click on the fiend. Even then, it sounds disgustingly strong. It's not like pressing Varian Taunt is that hard, right? <laughs> uh, Hellborn. That's the Aswodan units. The ones that uh, throw the fireballs. Oh, there's a lot of changes. So supply cost from 5 to 8. Sounds a lot to me. Uh, cost increased from 150, 150 to 250, 225. So a lot more expensive. HP increased from 200 to 260. So 
So they're more tanky. Damage increased from 30 to 50. And plus 50 to structure. So they have a lot more damage, actually. And keep in mind, they deal splash damage. Ah, yeah, they say it. Clo uh, cone splash damage increased from 15 to 25. Man, this unit sounds... I mean, it's more expensive, right? And more supply, but it's a lot stronger. I need to see that. Could be... Could be very strong now into Exos. Like the Exo med tech, you know? What Infernal said, they can't... Can't beat it. Maybe you just build Hellborn. I mean, you built Hellborns before, actually. To counter it. I think it kind of worked. But now it should be much better. Uh, Shadow Flyer. That is the Infernal... Suicide unit, the, the Scourgey. Uh, Shadowflyer now deals 125 damage to its primary target and 50 in an area of 3. Down from 125 in the entire... So, that's a very significant nerf. Which I think is good because it kind of prevented air units from happening. Because the Scourgies were so... Like, it fucking flew in and it blew up everything. Maybe air units will be imbalanced now. I don't know. Like, maybe th this is the only thing that controlled them. So, we, we will have to see, right? And then the Weaver, that is the very, very slow unit of uh, Infernal, the late game. The one with the, the, vi the Abduct. Uh, I assume Lash is the one that is Abducting. Like, that's the cooldown. So, it has higher cooldown. It damage change from 60 to 20% of a unit's max HP. Wait, that's how much damage it did? What the fuck, bro? Sounds like the unit was giga busted. They nerf it, even though almost no one used it, by the way. The Weaver. So internally, they must have looked at the stats and they're like, wow, something is very wrong here. We, <laughs> we went a bit overboard with this one. So they, they just nerf it, actually. They didn't make it tankier, they didn't reduce the cost, they just nerfed the unit. We didn't see it that much, and maybe we should be thankful for that. Uh, and the consume cooldown is um, 5 seconds as well. So they made it consistent with the other consume. Uh, that's it, right? Yeah. So, both races got nerfs and buffs. I think, okay, let me, let me see. So very, uh, first of all, very important. High APM doesn't cre crash the game anymore. Units that have mana don't drop the FPS to 10 anymore. These are two very, very good changes. <laughs> Thumbs up. Thanks. We can finally play the game again.